I, 33 male, met my wife, 33 female, when we were working in the same office eight years ago. I was new in town, I just moved to a brand new city for my job, and she was a receptionist at the time. She gave me a tour of the facilities, and we hit it off. It took a few weeks for me to work up the courage to ask her out, but she said yes, and we had been together ever since. We got married a few years later, and everything felt like a dream. We were happy, doing well in our lives, and so in love. Before marriage, we had a conversation about family, and we both wanted children, but we wanted to wait until it was the right time. We saw starting a family in our 20s as giving up our youth, so we made the most of it. We traveled, we went skydiving, and we enjoyed ourselves without having to worry about anyone else. Over the years during our marriage, I started to realize that I wanted to settle down and start a family. However, it was clear that my wife still wanted to have the jet-setting lifestyle that we had before. We actually ended up getting into a lot of arguments about how we wanted different things in our lives. In one of those arguments, I told her that if she wasn't going to have children, I would have to leave her. I know it was a crappy ultimatum, but I had been very clear that I wanted children. She told me about some of the fears she had, and how she wanted to be a mom, but she wasn't sure when. I guess that gave me enough hope to stick around. About a year had passed and approaching the subject was a delicate situation for me, so I tried to avoid it. She was still going out on the weekends with her girlfriends and going to bars and clubs while I was home recuperating from the work week. I started to notice that she was staying out later and going out more frequently with her friends. Before, she would go out on Friday and Saturday nights, but she had started going out on weeknights as well. When I asked her about it, she told me that she and her friends found a fun happy hour place and had been going there. One night, I was at home watching a nature documentary while my wife was supposedly at a happy hour with some of her friends. One of those friends happened to be our next door neighbor who we were pretty close with. She and her husband would invite us over all the time and we would do the same with them. Someone rang my doorbell, so I got up and answered it. Lo and behold, it was the woman next door that I was under the impression was out with my wife. Apparently, her car wouldn't start so she needed me to give it a jump since her husband hadn't come home yet. I agreed and grabbed my keys to walk over to her house with her. I asked her why she wasn't at the happy hour with my wife, and she told me that my wife said it was cancelled. A lot of red flags were flying for me at that point. Our neighbors were probably some of our closest friends, I didn't understand why my wife would lie to her and tell her the happy hour was cancelled. As we were talking more, she mentioned that she had really been looking forward to it and she was upset that it was cancelled because her husband had been working late a lot more. Right away I was kind of suspicious about that. Maybe it was my own paranoia or maybe I was putting some pieces together that I didn't even know were connected, but I was wondering if there might have been something going on with my wife and my neighbor. When she got home, I asked her about it outright. She told me that I was being crazy for assuming that she would be cheating on me with our neighbor of all people. Then she explained why she told our neighbor the happy hour was cancelled. Apparently, she had rubbed someone in her group of friends the wrong way and they were uncomfortable with her being there. I believe what she said at the time, but in hindsight, it didn't make any sense. Our neighbor was the sweetest woman and I couldn't understand how she would rub someone the wrong way like that. With all our issues, our sex life had pretty much gone out the window. We had a lot of built-up resentment toward each other and we didn't really talk about it in a healthy way to want to be with each other. One night when I got home from work, my wife was home and very eager to sleep with me. I was surprised, but I didn't think much of it. I was just happy it was happening. About a week later, she was waiting for me when I got home from work in the living room holding a pregnancy test in her hand. It was positive. At the time, I was completely over the moon. I was finally going to have a kid. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that it wasn't mine. She wasn't going to clubs or happy hours because of the pregnancy, but she was still out quite often. I felt like we should have been together through most of the pregnancy, but it still felt kind of like she was avoiding me. Something that occurs to me now, but I didn't think much of the time, is that she never wanted me to go with her to the ultrasound appointments. She would always tell me that they weren't anything important, but I wanted to see the little baby on the monitor. I was finally able to convince her to let me go to one. 
While we were there, the doctor showed us our baby on the monitor, and I was so moved I almost cried. Out of curiosity, I asked her if they had an estimated conception date. My wife quickly stepped in and played it off like they would have no way of knowing, but the doctor said that they could give a rough estimate, usually within a week of the actual date. She gave me the estimated time range, and later on, when I was thinking about it, I realized that it was during the period of time my wife and I hadn't been together in months. She and I had sex together one time, and a week later she told me she was pregnant. I did a little bit of research online to figure out if a week was enough time to get a positive test, and from what I gathered it was pretty rare. It was rare enough for a woman to even notice she was pregnant a week after conception. Something wasn't adding up, and I needed answers before the baby came. I've never been one to go through my wife's things, that was a boundary neither of us wanted to cross with each other. But in this case, when I thought she was lying to me about being the father of the child I so desperately wanted, I was able to justify doing it. I logged into her laptop while she was out, and I found countless messages through her social media pages between her and our neighbor. All of my suspicions about the two of them had been correct. They had been sleeping together for several months, and it was clear through the messages that the baby was his. He didn't want anything to do with it, and he was worried that it would ruin his life if anything came out about the affair. They both agreed that they would pretend the baby was mine. I honestly can't put into words how heartbreaking that was to confirm. Having a child was my number one priority at the time. I was so happy that it was finally happening and all of that was taken from me. I wasn't going to let them get away with what they were trying to do. Neither of them got to ruin my life and pretend like nothing happened. A few weeks passed and I was pulling away from my wife. I was in the process of getting a divorce attorney and filing the papers so I could surprise her with them. We were throwing a shower so people could buy us gifts and welcome the baby a few months before they came. All of our friends and family came over to our house for the event. It was the perfect time to call them both out for the affair. Before the presents were open and the cake was cut, I stood up next to my wife and told the room that I wanted to say something. Everybody looked at me as if they were expecting me to give some heartfelt message about how much I loved my wife and couldn't wait to welcome our baby into this world together. Instead, I congratulated her and the father on their baby. I could sense that there was some confusion in the room so I clarified. I let everybody know, including my wife, that I knew the baby wasn't mine. Everyone was shocked and disgusted with her. It takes a special kind of person to pretend like a baby is someone else's. When I was finished, I handed her divorce papers and told her that I would be leaving the house and that I would have nothing to do with her or her baby. My neighbor's wife was furious and she dragged him outside to tell him off. As it turned out, he was given a position at her father's company and was up for quite the promotion because he planned on retiring. It was a family-owned company and his father-in-law wanted to make sure it stayed in the family, so he was going to inherit all of it. When they got divorced, that didn't happen. I was able to get a divorce from my wife, and I'm better off without her now. I'm actually with someone else who seems to want the same things in life as I do. We're still in the beginning stages, so I don't know if this is a forever thing, but I have a good feeling about her. My now ex-wife and our neighbor tried to work things out for the sake of the baby, but I guess they only liked each other when they were sneaking around. Neither of them are in relationships. My ex ended up moving back home with her mom because she couldn't afford the rent in her neighborhood by herself. OP, my heart goes out to you for what you went through. It was truly cruel for your ex to convince you that you were having a child when you wanted one so badly. She just didn't want to raise the baby alone, and that's clear. I know finding out must have been difficult, but it's best that you found out when you did. Otherwise, everything would have been much more difficult for you. I'm happy to hear that you found another person who wants the same things as you. It seems like your ex lied about a lot of stuff before you were married and switched it up after the fact. I hope what you have with this new woman works out and you can have the happy family you've always wanted. Now let's get into our second story for today. I, 25 male, recently found out that my girlfriend, 25 female, has been cheating on me with a college professor. I'm honestly still shocked and hurt by the news. She completely broke my trust and I don't know how I'm supposed to move on. She and I were high school sweethearts. I've known her my entire life, 
We even used to have play dates together as children. When we got into high school, we started dating in our sophomore year, and we had been together ever since. Everybody thought that we were going to be together forever. We were even voted as the best couple every year during high school. She got into an Ivy League college in her state, but my grades have never been close to what hers were. While she was in college, I took a job at a realtor firm, planning on getting my license when I knew the industry a little bit better. We would always visit each other on the weekends because we weren't too far away, but I had some concerns while she was in college. I never thought that she was cheating on me then, but I felt insecure about the possibility of it. Honestly, both of us came from nothing, and I was worried she would realize she could do better with her life and leave me. I thought that when she got into this fancy Ivy League school, some rich lacrosse player was going to sweep her off her feet and she would forget all about me. She would reassure me whenever she could tell that I was feeling bad, so I stopped worrying. When she graduated with her undergraduate degree, the school offered her a faculty position that allowed her to pursue her graduate degree at no cost. It was too good of an opportunity to pass up, even though it meant that we would be apart longer. Her job was to assist one of the professors in her department with his research. He was a prominent researcher in their field, and he had a team of students working under him and doing all of the actual work that he was taking credit for. Because of her new job, we couldn't even see each other on the weekends. Every now and then I would come up and surprise her, but she was always so stressed and so tired from her work that we never had any fun. However, when I did get the chance to talk to her, all she would talk about was her professor. She idolized him like he was the lead singer of some rock band. At first, I thought it was just professional admiration, but when I saw a picture of both of them in one of the school's newsletters, I started to raise my eyebrows. It was a harmless article highlighting the research that the chemistry department had been doing. Inside the article, there were different pictures of the students doing the research, as well as some candid shots of everybody while they were working. I happened to notice that in one of the pictures his hand was resting on my girlfriend's lower back. For some people, that's a harmless gesture. But seeing her much older male professor doing that to her brought up a lot of red flags for me. Shortly after seeing the image, I gave her a call and I just asked her about it straight up. She laughed at me and told me that I had nothing to worry about and that I was just in my own head and feeling insecure like I always was. She and I rarely fought, but the way she phrased her statements made me pretty angry, and we got into a huge argument about it. After two days of not talking, I caved in and called her and apologized, and it seemed like everything was going to be good from there. Our anniversary was coming up, and we had originally planned for her to take the entire weekend off so we could spend it together. I was halfway to her apartment when she called me and told me she wasn't able to step away from the lab. I pulled over on the side of the road and talked to her about it, telling her how disappointed I was that she wasn't putting her foot down about it since this meant so much to us. She promised me that she would make it up to me the following weekend and told me just to turn around and go home. I was closer to her apartment than I was to my house, so I just carried on moving forward. I figured that if she was stressed out and tired, I could at least order some takeout for her and spend a few hours with her before leaving. When I got to her apartment, I unlocked the door with the spare key that I had and right away I realized that she was home. She had told me on the phone that she would be at the lab for most of the night so that was a surprise. I could smell food and I could hear giggling coming from her bedroom. I walked further in and saw that there had been a meal recently cooked. Two plates were on the table, and a half-empty bottle of wine accompanied them. My heart completely sank into my stomach. Just as I had suspected, there was definitely something going on. I didn't know who it was, but she clearly had somebody here for a romantic night, and they were in bed with her. I cautiously approached her door and opened it to find her in bed with her professor on top of her. They didn't notice me right away, but when I spoke up and asked what was going on, he jumped off of her and she quickly ran up to me and tried to calm me down. It was almost comical how hard the professor was trying to hide his face from me. Clearly, he didn't want me to tell anyone about what I saw. I stormed out of her apartment, dropping my spare key on the ground before I left. I never wanted to go back there again. It was a lot for me to process for the first few days after it happened. I was practically dead to the world. 
I had planned on marrying my girlfriend, and before I even had a chance to propose, she threw eight years of a relationship away. We could have had a love story to tell our grandchildren about, but she ruined it. After I got myself together, I realized that I needed to move on by getting a little revenge of my own. Obviously, the professor did not want me to see who he was because he was afraid of losing his job. I knew that once the headlines were out about a notable professor taking advantage of his college students, that he would never find another job in the industry again. I called the HR department of the university and told them about what I saw. They told me they would be launching an investigation. I knew it would be my word against his, and I, unfortunately, didn't get any evidence. A week passed and nothing happened. I assumed they were sweeping it under the rug. So, I called a local newspaper, and they were very interested in the scandal. It didn't take long for me to finally see the news that he had been fired. I hadn't spoken to my ex since the night I found her in bed with her professor, but her parents were furious with me about outing the relationship. Apparently, since the professor she was hired to work for no longer worked at the university, she didn't have a job. That meant that they would either have to shell out tens of thousands of dollars for her graduate degree, or she would no longer be enrolled. She ended up having to drop out because they couldn't afford to take out any more loans for her. She is out of my life completely, but I still don't know what I'm supposed to do moving forward. She was the first and only woman I've been with, and I am a little afraid to get back out there. OP, my condolences for what you went through. You trusted your gut and knew that something was wrong, and you were right. She took advantage of the conversations you had expressing your concerns and eased your mind to avoid any more doubt from you. You did the right thing by contacting the newspaper about the story. It sounds like the university saw the professor as a big draw, and they weren't going to do anything about him. He definitely won't have any luck finding a new job. It's good that you have cut all ties with your ex, but I hope you won't let this experience stop you from finding happiness with the right person. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.